What is up, everyone? Welcome to Cooper's Conquest. My name is Cooper. Thank you all so much for being here today. I've been on three solo cruises in my life. Two of them happen to be this year, and I wanted to kind of share my experiences and give you some tips um, and some insight about what it's like going on a solo cruise. Perhaps you're thinking about going on a solo cruise or something happened with one of your friends and they canceled and you still want to go on the cruise. Um, if you're thinking about it, I strongly suggest that you do go on a solo cruise. I've got a whole list of things written down. I didn't number them at all, but it's pretty lengthy here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to go through a bunch of this. Uh, I think the goal is to, to not feel lonely when you're on a cruise because when you're on a solo cruise, I think that's one of the things that we think about because everyone's kind of paired up. Everyone has their friends and family. They might have their excursions planned, their, their situations planned, their setups planned, and it's kind of hard to infiltrate we'll say uh, someone's space like that you know you don't want to be overbearing um, so it, it's a little bit tricky navigating some of these situations one of the real realities is not everyone's going to want to talk to you you know you're, you're going to be in this great mood maybe you're at a Motown set when the band is playing and you're really feeling uh, their whole Stevie Wonder vibe that's going on and you look over to the people next to you and they kind of look happy and you try to engage and they're you know a little bit standoffish it's perfectly normal you know not everyone wants to let you into their bubble or whatever they have going on you know people might have their shields up at times I don't think you should take that as an insult it's nothing against you you just kind of Take it for what it is and move on because there are thousands of people on the ship for you to interact with. I remember going on uh, every single solo cruise, all three of my solo cruises that I went on. I felt nervous embarking on the ship. You know, you don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know when you're going to meet them. You don't know if you're really going to like them and you might start hanging out with them in the beginning and then you're kind of like, uh, I kind of want to branch off on my own and, and that part gets a little tricky. This is all perfectly normal. It's part of the solo cruise experience, but the best part is you get to do whatever you want to do. Um, you might go on a cruise with one of your best friends or you know if you have a significant other I highly encourage that you go on a cruise with your significant other um, unless you know they can't make it but you know you might have your friends or a family member or whoever you're with a big group of people and even if they're your best friends in the world you still kind of have to cater to their time in a way so when you're going on a solo cruise you're just doing whatever you want to do it is a really excellent feeling to be so free and to go wherever you want to sleep whenever you want to party whenever you want to dance whenever you want it's an awesome vibe i highly encourage you to go on a solo cruise if you're considering it one thing that I suggest you do if you're going to be a solo cruiser is join the Facebook group that's created for whatever ship that you're going to sail. I've only ever done Carnival, cru Carnival Cruises, full disclaimer, I've only ever done Carnival Cruises, full disclaimer, um, but I'm pretty sure all the big ships do this and you can just introduce yourself, take a nice selfie and say, hey, I'm solo cruising, you know, if you see me on the ship, you know, make sure you wave at me and say hi, introduce yourself. Maybe we can have a coffee or a drink and have a chat. I'm really friendly, outgoing, whatever. And people will totally approach you and you that's a really easy way to make friends and connections even before you get on the ship. Um, and, and leading into one of my next tips here is someone may try to adopt you while you're on the ship. And I say adopt you, meaning, you know, it could be a group of four or five people that are on the ship and they're, they're a, friend, a group of friends, a family, and you guys really hit it off. And they might say, hey, come have a drink with us. Hey, come meet with us. And you'll run into them somewhere and they'll say, hey, come hang with us. And that's a really good way to kind of, you can kind of latch on if they're being that forthcoming. They're probably okay hanging out with you in other scenarios too. Uh, you can easily approach them and say, are, are you, what are you guys doing on land? Are you guys going on excursions? What are you guys doing at the next port? Uh, what are your plans? And do you mind if I tag along? And they'll 99% of the time say, yeah, that's totally fine. So don't, don't be afraid of that. Be prepared for the adoption. Um, you can say no to the adoption too. If someone says, hey, do you want to come with us on this excursion? Don't feel pressured to say yes. They will still be there and they will still be totally cool with you if you turn them down. There might be some things that you do want to do and don't want to do and some things that they do want to do. But you know that you have a group of friends, we'll call them, that you can be comfortable with where if you were going out and you see them in any setting, you can easily approach them. It can be comfortable and you don't feel lonely. You don't feel like you're by yourself even though you're solo cruising. 
when you're embarking on the ship, I feel like the very first day, the very first four to six to eight hours are pretty pretty important to me personally as a solo cruiser. I mean, you know, we, we plan these cruises. Some people wait over a year for their cruise. And then when you're actually boarding the ship is, is the moment that you're really waiting for. So make sure you're well rested and you have as much energy as possible when you're actually boarding the ship and that you can last at least in decently into the evening. Now, I think it's important when you embark the ship uh, to kind of uh, go around and socialize and try to find a good spot for you to kind of post up. I think it's really a good idea to keep on moving to so you, you can see the whole ship, so you can see different people, so other people can see you as well. It's really easy to spot a solo cruiser when I mean, you're walking around on this cruise ship all by yourself. Most of the time, you're not with anyone. You're either all by yourself or you're with a group of people and you're trying to break away from them. Maybe they're family members and they're a little conservative and you just don't want to hang out with them. So you're kind of a solo cruiser in that regard as well. Um, in particular, in Carnival Cruises, there's a lobby bar. Um, I'm pretty sure all these other places have this kind of stuff too, but there's a lobby bar, there's a casino bar, there might be a karaoke joint, there might be another kind of pub, and and I would encourage you to go check out these places and keep moving every 45 minutes to an hour unless the vibe that you find is totally unmatched and you know that you're having the time of your life. Don't, you know, throw this advice out the window. But if it's just kind of cool and kind of okay, you're going to see these people again. I know that there's thousands of people on the ship, but you run into the same people over and over again, especially if you keep moving. It's a survival tactic and I use it when I'm solo cruising and solo traveling and it just kind of helps you cover more ground and you meet more people there's just more opportunity for luck I know I'm kind of babbling here but what I'm getting at is is the embarkation day uh, I think that it's it's kind of important not important but I think it's a good idea to participate in events if you can like there's a big sail away party on carnival cruises I think it's a good idea to get up there and actually try to dance even if you can't dance I think the cruise director does an excellent job of giving instructions on what legs to use and what arm movements to use and by the way you won't be the only person with two left feet and two left hands um, everyone out there is looking a fool and having a good time no one looks like that much of an idiot unless you just get totally stupid and sloppy but everyone's just having a good time and I think that when you're all by yourself having a good time there's a chance that other people might approach you and say hey are you by yourself uh, because it's it's just something that people kind of notice like you, this person's not with anyone and you're on a cruise and and when someone sees a solo cruiser they, they kind of get props you know a lot of people don't have the stones to do it like, like I said earlier it, it's nerve-wracking and it's not the most comfortable thing to do but you do make friends along the way it's funny you know spot, spotting another solo cruiser is, is something that I have written down here and the very first time I went on a solo cruise I, I had this big nice suite booked with a significant other and we actually didn't we actually broke up up about a month before the cruise and I told her like if, if you want to come on this cruise like you still can come um, but she said no you can take a friend take a family member whatever well I decided to go by myself and when I was leaving my room I go to the bar and I see a guy sitting at the bar all by himself and I said hey I'm going to go say hi to him and I said hey man this girl just left me so I'm on this cruise by myself and he said dude I'm on this cruise by myself too this other chick and I just broke up and we became really really good friends after that now I, I wanted to say this because uh, it's 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 kind of easy to spot another uh, solo cruiser if you see someone all by themselves go say hi go approach them go find out their story go find out why they're by themselves now a, a couple of times their significant other or their friend might be asleep in their room um, or doing whatever maybe eating some food and this person didn't want to but usually from my personal experience, when I've seen someone all by themselves, I go say hi and they're typically by themselves. And there you have a friend. Something that I think 
a lot of people are afraid of when it comes to solo cruising is the actual dining situation. What are you going to do when you're at sea and your phone doesn't work um, and you're just kind of sitting there eating food and, and, and just kind of looking around? Well, personally, I love the dining experience. I really enjoy going to a sit-down restaurant by myself. Uh, sometimes I'll bring a book or I'll go through my phone and go through some notes that I've taken or maybe I'll take some notes or I'll go through some pictures or through some videos or anything just kind of to get my mind right as a reset. I think cruising is so overwhelming there's so many aesthetics there's so much going on there's so much stimulation um, I think that the time to dine by myself is a really good reset. Now, this is for me personally, and I don't think that it's awkward to dine by yourself. When I went on my first seven-day cruise on the Carnival Pride, I'll, I'll link it in the description below if you haven't seen that. But when I went on my first seven-day cruise, I went to the dining room all seven nights, and I requested the same serving crew. Uh, the, the very first serving crew I had were three lovely young ladies, um, Diana, Tanya, and Karen. Shout out if y'all are ever watching this. But they took took care of me the first night and I requested them uh, going forward and you develop a relationship with them you know after seeing them three nights in a row you you kind of get more personal and they ask you more about your experience and you get to ask them questions too and I think the whole experience is a lot more comfortable and you really don't feel alone I think that's the whole key of the whole solo, cru solo cruising experience is to not feel alone and when you're dining by yourself I don't want I don't think it's something that should feel lonely it could be a time for reset a time for a reflection a time for planning now what if you're into the buffet you know what if you don't like the dining room well I think the buffet is a lot quicker it's not going to take you 45 minutes to an hour to get all of your food uh, from the kitchen it'll take you 30 minutes tops to eat all your food right so I think there's a lot less reflection that goes on and there's a lot of stimulation in the buffet to me as opposed to the dining room even though the dining room does have the show I still think a lot of people are kind of you know being a little bit more rugged I say rugged just a little more more out in the in the area rather than in the dining in the dining room everyone's just seated and kind of in their own space uh, I think buffets just have a lot more traffic they definitely have a lot more traffic so I, I I personally don't love that part for reflection but if you're going to be cruising solo I still think it's very similar um, you just won't have that person to talk to um, when you're dining at the buffet Un unless you meet someone of course but this is all in scenarios where you're just kind of uh, going by yourself so personally I would choose the dining room over the buffet but to each their own um, it's really a good idea to bring a book or obviously if you get the internet package it's a good time to just go through your phone and check whatever you need to check Navigating a port of call as a solo cruiser can be a little bit tricky. I think the easiest way to handle port day is to just to book an excursion. But what if you don't have the money for an excursion? You know, I'm going to kind of go in that direction. If you did book an excursion, I think it's easy because you're doing something that you enjoy and they're going to find other people that enjoy the same things that you enjoy so it's going to be kind of easier to talk to them and a much uh, higher chance to make a connection with someone and these are also going to be people that are on your same ship so you do something with them for a few hours and you're going to see them later on you all can kind of be buddies going forward. Now, what if you don't want to book an excursion? Or what if you don't have the money for an excursion? I don't book excursions through cruise lines. I just kind of do my own thing. Um, you, it's, it's not going to be as easy to meet people or find people. Now, there were a few scenarios where I was walking around and someone said, Hey, are you on the... I was on the Carnival Pride. Like, you were on the Carnival Pride? And I said, yeah, and we had lunch together. And I was just kind of walking around just exploring and they called me out. There was another time where I was exploring uh, Mahogany Bay um, and I was just kind of going to and from the beach. Maybe I went to a beach bar or something, but I ran into a group of four people and they said, Hey, we're going to the beach do you want to join us and I said hell yeah I want to join you so there's going to be those types of scenarios where if you follow my tips for what I said about embarkation day and participating and staying on a moving pace people will see you they will notice that you are a solo cruiser and you don't really have anyone to go to or any real commitments you're all by yourself and a lot of people 
we'll do this adoption thing that we talked about earlier like hey do you want to come with us because we know you don't have anyone else to go to so i think it's an awesome thing and obviously you can politely decline or you can say yeah i want to rock with you so i i really love solo cruising for that reason you get to do what you want to do whenever you want to do it and if someone does adopt you if someone is really friendly if you find some awesome friends it makes that experience that much better but like I said, it is difficult to find friends on the port. It is difficult to make friends on the port. Um, you might go to a bar and sit down and, and talk to someone, but you can do that anywhere in the world, right? So I, I would advise if you're feeling lonely on a port day or if you really want to make friends on a port day, just book an excursion and you will have the time of your life and you will make friends that way. Um, otherwise, just be prepared to be by yourself and do some exploring and maybe meeting someone along the way. That'll be a little bit more adventurous for phase of the cruise i do think it's healthy to just kind of go out on your own um i i don't mean go out into the towns i mean go out on the port you know where it's safer for all the cruisers i, I think that's really healthy to do uh, to kind of explore on your own i highly encourage you all to do that I do encourage you as a solo cruiser to participate in all the events, to at least attend the events. Maybe you don't have to participate. I encourage participation, but there's nothing wrong with watching the participants as well. Um, if you're going to go to any of the music events, I know on Carnival Cruises, there's always a band and they play lively music. Sometimes people dance. I encourage you to get up and dance. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything crazy or fancy, but just have a good time look like you're having a good time as a solo cruiser other people will see that and they will gravitate towards that energy you will be surprised at how much people will say oh my god you're you're by yourself and you're dancing how do you do that i wish i had that kind of energy and if you just go out there and do it you'll be surprised what the human mind is capable of carnival cruises has this awesome band that plays motown sets and stevie wonder and 80 sets there's also uh that my my last cruise it was out of it was out of uh, Miami it was on the Carnival Conquest they had a, a Latin night and it was the most jumping thing that I have seen in in a really long time I mean there was the dance floor was packed okay everyone was dancing the entire time I was into it you know I'm not a very good Latin dancer I'm not a good salsa dancer but I kind of faked it a little bit I think I got down for for the most part what I'm trying to say here is participate in the events because people will notice you they will notice that you're all by yourself and you're having a good time and you're not trying to just blend in with the atmosphere you're actually actively doing this you're actively having a good time and people will gravitate towards that energy getting to know the staff is one of the best tips in in my opinion that anyone can do as a solo cruiser uh, there's something about having a staff member call your name from across the way and when you're all by yourself and you can kind of kind of kick it with a staff member and say hey how you doing and be real personable have a personable conversation with them other people notice that because that experience doesn't happen to every single cruiser now the staff members are trained to learn our names they are trained to to talk about us or to ask us about our experiences and to remember certain things but there is a certain line where someone might get a little bit better service or they might have a more personable experience with a staff member because well, they, they are more personable with them. Like there was a time on, on one of my cruises where I saw one of my dining room servers up on Lido deck. I would only see the dining room server, you know, on deck three or whatever, and now we are on deck nine, and she called me out from across the dining room, and here I am all by myself, you know, and other people notice this, and you as a solo cruiser, this is very empowering because other people are going to see this and they're going to notice like, hey, this person's all by themselves and they have a staff member saying, hello, hello, hello. Maybe I should try to get to know this person. Another way to make friends. This is another way to not feel alone on the ship. Make sure you're smiling. Make sure you're always being personable. Make sure you're always being friendly to everyone that you interact with. I do think it's important to participate in events, in events because it's a higher chance that someone may call you from across the way and boom, you have another friend. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's important to have a base. 
I wanted to tie this into the whole getting to know the staff members part, but um, it, it still does kind of tie in because there are going to be parts of your cruise where you're just all by yourself. And, you know, even though you've made friends, even though you've interacted with people and everyone loves you, um, there are going to be times where you're all by yourself. And I think that you should have a place that you can go that's comfortable and a place that you can go to where, you know, maybe the bartender or the barista is really friendly and you can really talk to them in a comfortable manner. Um, this kind of ties in with the embarkation day as well. When I tell you to keep moving around and to find a place that you'd like to be comfortable and a place that you're going to want to be going to uh, repetitively. And, and it might be a karaoke joint. It might be a super busy place, you know, or it might be... Uh, uh, the casino bar that's not as busy or maybe the lobby bar where a lot of action is but I think that um, it's important to find a location of comfort because there is a time where you are all by yourself and the object of you know doing a solo cruise successfully is to not feel lonely and I think that when we find a base that we can go to it can kind of offset that loneliness one thing as a solo cruiser that you should not do or one thing you should try to not do is is you should try to not use your phone. You should try to really be present when you're on the ship and to really have your head up and to look forward and to smile and to be friendly. If you're kind of on your phone, I feel like it's a defense mechanism, especially when you're all by yourself. You're you're pretty much you're, you're, you're unapproachable, you know, if, if you're kind of just walking, like doing this, who is ever going to say hello? Who is ever going to approach you, approach you? You're almost unapproachable. So I think that your phone should be used in your room or during dining, as I said earlier. Try your best to keep your phone in your pocket, unless you're doing a video, unless you're doing a picture. Maybe you wanna take some notes as well. I think that's totally fine. But generally speaking, cruising is a time to disconnect from this chaos that we have going on in our lives. And I think it's a really awesome time to put our phones down in the airplane mode and just enjoy the experience. Now, honestly, I'm a pretty outgoing person. I don't have that much trouble uh, saying hi, meeting people, getting rejected, whatever. It's a part of life. But at nighttime on the cruise ship is a little bit tricky for me personally. And and on carnival ships, I have never been on any other ship, so I'm referring to my personal carnival experience here. But after a certain time, there's only two places available. You can either go to the nightclub or you can go to the casino bar. There's also the Lido deck that's showing a movie, so that's that's three different places. But as far as like being social or as far as like meeting people, because this is kind of what this this whole video is about. As far as like interacting with people, the only two places to really go are the casino bar or the nightclub. Now, the nightclub is playing blastingly loud music. So it's literally not impossible, but it's almost impossible to have a real conversation in the nightclub. Um, now, if you're not a dancer, you know, this is, and most of us, I think, watching this video are not dancers. Um, if you're a dancer, get out on the dance floor, do your thing, you're gonna have a great time. This part's not for you. But if you're not really into dancing or you're just kinda like, eh, you know, you don't like to do it that much, the nightclub is tricky to navigate. Now, I, I think that personally, it's a really good idea to kinda get a seat at the bar because there's a lot of traffic going in and out of the bar so you're going to see a lot of a lot of people walking through and it's going to be comfortable to sit and you're going to be, get a good line of sight on the dance floor because if people are doing crazy dances or whatever you can see that rather comfortably and you can still sit down now if you do have the drink package easy you know it's a it's a defense mechanism but i'm not trying to promote drinking here so i'm trying to leave alcohol out of this even though i mentioned bars a couple times but you know there's free water in the nightclub uh, so that's great you know you can sit there with your water and you can just watch and there are people walking up and you can kind of talk to them a little bit and I think that someone may notice that you're by yourself and they'll say hi now this is not guaranteed there's been times where I've been in the nightclub and it feels kind of lonely I'm not gonna lie so uh, so like I said the nightclub is tricky I do think that as a solo cruiser you should go to the nightclub because 
that's kind of where everyone is at the end of the night. Unless you're tired, obviously just go to bed. Now, the other place to go to was a casino bar. Now, the casino bar is uh, obviously there's no live music there. So it's more of just a, a laid back vibe. I do not encourage gambling at all. I have not looked at the casino odds, but I'm pretty sure that the odds to win on the ship are worse than the odds are to on any local casinos or in Vegas or Atlantic City or wherever. So I just I encourage you not to do the gambling thing, whatever. Um, but another place to, to socialize would be the casino bar. And uh, there's just not that much to do there. So you're just kind of sitting around and drinking. So like, the, the nighttime is very tricky if you haven't made friends. So this is why I say during embarkation day i think it's important to move around i think it's important to show your face a lot i think it's important to participate in events as much as possible because people are going to see you they're going to know that you're all by yourself so that when you're at the nightclub when you're at the casino bar um, or if you're up on Lidl deck all by yourself people already know and they've seen you have fun they know you're by yourself you're more likely to be approached by someone or see someone with, you know, an open open arms, you know, or they want you to approach them. And you can always say hi to anyone if they give you like a smile or, or a wave, you know, make sure you're friendly, make sure you're open. And I think that really goes a long way for us solo cruisers. Uh, I've been talking for, I don't know how long I've been making this video, but one thing I haven't mentioned is getting in a pool or a jacuzzi, and that's because I do it so rarely. I'm such an air conditioning bar inside guy that I don't like getting wet and changing my clothes and changing them again and washing off the chlorine. So I don't really have any tips for you about meeting people in pools or jacuzzis. I don't really know the etiquette that well. I need someone else to to make a video on that or maybe I'll try it on my next ship and let you know how much I failed and how much I'm learning but uh, you know obviously you should be getting in pools if you want to I just don't have anything to contribute as a solo cruiser I'm so sorry about that but I do encourage you to get in the pool and to cool off especially if you're in some kind of tropical climate get in the pool um, don't let that discourage you if you're going to be a solo cruiser as a solo cruiser I think that it's important to be getting people People's, uh, inf people's contact information, uh, whether it be social media, phone numbers, however you like to keep in contact with people. I think that this is a really cool way to make your future cruises pretty awesome. You can make a really small cruise community that you talk to and you can say hey are you guys going on a cruise this day or this day or you can plan cruises with other people and you can still be a solo cruiser and you know other people on the ship so I think it's important that when you're making these friends when you're talking to people you just say hey um can we keep in contact? Are you on Facebook or Instagram? Can I have your phone number? And 99 times out of 100 they'll say yes I don't think I've had anyone ever say no. I don't think I've any have anyone ever say no. So so you know, not that they'll always answer their phone, you know, but they won't at least they won't say no in the moment. And I don't think it will ever be awkward. And I think that it's really cool to form like a cruising community of people that you can talk to and you can still rock out as a solo cruiser and you can go on cruises with other people. And I think that's the goal. I think it's awesome to be able to travel by yourself and to know people on the ship and to be able to do your own thing and to not have a care in the world. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please like and subscribe if you like this content. See you on my next ship.